right, seven minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Dr. Thomas C. Corbridge is on the phone with Candice Norris. Uh, they're talking about COPD. Dr. Corbridge is a pulmonologist and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease expert for GSK and pulmonologist in Chicago. So let's find out about this. November is National COPD Month, by the way, or COPD Awareness Month. Good morning, uh, Dr. Corbridge and Candice. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Are you guys in Chicago? No, we are currently uh, in New York City. Oh, all right. So, so I, I, I don't want to ask something that probably everybody knows but me, but what is it? What is COPD? COPD stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. It's an umbrella term that's really meant to include two more specific terms, one being emphysema, which would be loss of lung tissue or holes in the lung. And the other is chronic bronchitis, which speaks to the effects of the disease on bronchial tubes where they can become inflamed and narrowed. And the combination of these under that COPD label uh, invariably causes shortness of breath uh, and also can cause intermittent flare-ups or exacerbations uh, in okay. patients. So is asthma one of many COPD examples? So the, the, uh, the, the really the classic patient with COPD in the United States uh, has had a significant history of cigarette smoking over the years that causes these symptoms of breathlessness and these potentials for flare-up ah. that come on gradually over kind of the age of 40 usually. I see. So this is definitely brought on by our lifestyles of, of smoking. Yeah, most people in the United States uh, have uh, themselves smoked or have been, you know, exposed to smoke in some other fashion. So, so Candace, it says you uh, live with COPD. Were you a smoker? Uh, yes, I was for many years. But I did eventually quit and completely turn my lifestyle around. And now I participate in uh, 5Ks. I watch what I eat. Good for I you. Open with my doctor and. Life is good. Wow. So, so tell me about the. I'm gonna. I have a, de a doctor question for Doctor Corbett, but I have a, a a question for you, Candace, about this. Do you? Can you tell right away, or did it take a long time uh, when you started changing your lifestyle? Actually, my turnaround was relatively fast after I made the decision to take control of my symptoms and disease. Uh, I I worked very hard at it. I had. Uh, advocates in my family that helped me and I became very open with my doctor to let him know exactly how I was feeling. And you were determined to uh, to turn it around, whatever damage I you did, right? Yeah. I was determined. Oh my gosh. Uh, Dr. Corbett, are there medications that, that help or is it just a lifestyle turnaround? You know, I think the best approach is really a multidisciplinary approach that starts with that good uh, relationship with your physician, uh, certainly uh, smoking cessation if still required. Uh, vaccinations that are appropriate, uh, and like Candace, getting back into exercising or formal pulmonary rehabilitation, and appropriate medications, you know, unique to uh, to each patient. And this comprehensive program really can be effective uh, to relieve those symptoms of shortness of breath, uh, get people back and moving, and also very importantly can decrease the chance of those flare-ups or exacerbations uh, which can cause additional lung damage. Can uh, COPD uh, be hereditary? So uh, that's a, r a really good question. So most patients with COPD have, you know, smoked cigarettes, have been exposed to that, you know, noxious uh, stimulus. But, uh, but we also understand that there can be a genetic predisposition uh, to the development of COPD. So the two combine uh, at some level in most patients to create the illness. And uh, Candace, you also said that your, your sister is living, has been diagnosed with COPD. How are you able to help her? I just encourage her um, more than anything. Uh, we live in separate cities, uh, but people with COPD, just like other conditions, you need to you need encouragement, you need support, you need someone to be able to talk to at any given time, and you know that's that's what we're there for. Um, and talk to your doctor; they they're critical to uh, give give information to, so that they can give you the correct information back. It's the only way your treatment plan is going to work for you. So the one part of this name that confuses me in every time I see it is the word chronic. Does that mean you have it for the rest of your life? Yes, so it is uh, viewed as incurable. Once you have it, you will have it and, it, and it often is progressive. And so that's why it's so important for patients to get in early, uh, be open and honest with how they're feeling, because it is treatable uh, with all of the things that we've, uh, we've mentioned today. 
Well, you're an inspiration, Candace. I, I, I got to start running or walking <laughs> or moving. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> right, is you your, love it. Is your yeah, breathing? You, you will have a, just a wonderful time. Is your breathing easier now? Oh, much easier. Much easier. I, I'm on a pretty strict plan of uh, medications, exercise, uh, how I eat, and it has made such a difference in my life. Um, I got tired of being hospitalized and being away from my family, and it's hard on your job, and they don't appreciate you being gone two or three weeks at a time. And, so, and financially, it's critical. So you really need to control uh, what's going on in your life, and that's one way you can do it. Just step up and uh, take control, uh, see your doctor, tell them how you're feeling, uh, visit websites that can uh, give you information for the questions you need to ask. For example, COPD.com is a great resource to help you with that. Uh, doctor, can this be a precursor to lung cancer? Uh, certainly, you know, patients who smoke cigarettes and develop uh, COPD are also at risk uh, for lung cancer. So, so they do have uh, certainly a common roots. And then how... Oh, is, is, is this sometimes misdiagnosed? Can it be d diagnosed as something other than COPD? You know, it, it, is, uh, it is common, uh, particularly, you know, from a patient perspective, to attribute some of these uh, symptoms to other things. And I mentioned, you know, uh, maybe they're getting older and they feel they're being, becoming breathless because of a weight issue or right. becoming, because they're not exercising. Uh, so when they come into the uh, physician, it is important for them to be very clear about where they are and how they're feeling so that the physician uh, can use that information to guide uh, towards a, a more appropriate and specific diagnosis. Uh, Dr. Corbridge and Candace Norris, thank you both for being on the air with us. Uh, Candace, earlier you gave us the website copd.com. I just wanted to make sure I repeated that. copd.com. Any other resources that you might want to recommend? Uh, that so far has been the best one that I have found because it's all encompassing. Uh, it can really got there's stories about other people on there. There's questions. There's it's just a, a huge resource of tools and uh, information for you. And I have found that to be the best one to use. Well, congratulations on making a smart decision for yourself. I, I had no idea until you mentioned it that you were literally in the hospital for weeks at a time. Sometimes that's what a life change you've made. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. Thank you both. We will be right back. 